Welcome back, y'all. What's happening out there in WBB land? We are back with another video, and this is a 12-part series highlighting each team for the upcoming 2025 WNBA expansion draft. Each video will highlight one team, project their protected six players, as well as project who Golden State will take from their team. Without further ado, let's get it popping. The Minnesota Lynx is a team the Golden State Valkyries should send a thank you note to because they are definitely going to get a player from this squad. I think Minnesota is one of three teams, including Washington and Dallas, where Golden State's going to have a lot of options. They can go a lot of different ways because there are multiple players that they can pluck and play. And I fully anticipate Minnesota to be back and raring to go next year off of their finals appearance. They were one Kayla McBride three-pointer away from their fifth title. Let's go ahead and look at these protections. The first five are no doubters. Of course, Nafisa Collier, Defensive Player of the Year, runner-up MVP. She will be back and better than ever next year. Courtney Williams. Maybe her best year ever as a professional basketball player, as a facilitator, as a leader. Really love what she did. She's back. Bridget Carlton, also her best year as a professional. She's back. Kayla McBride's back. Alana Smith, she's back. Her best year as a professional. Offense, defense, athletic. Looking like that 150 was a bargain. And then comes to the six protection. I'm not kidding when I say I can make a credible argument for at least five of these players. And one of them isn't even Alyssa Peely, their first round pick from last year. I can make a case for Diamond Miller. I can make a case for CeCe Zandalassini. I can make a case for Jessica Shepard and a player that no one is talking about who I think has crazy upside of all these international players and of all these French players is Maya Hirsch, the first round draft pick from 2023. 6'5", French, big. Love this player's upside. You could make a case for her. And frankly, yes, you could make a case for Elisa Pili. But I don't think they're going that way. In the end... Based on Cheryl Reeve, based on what we saw last year, based on what we know this team, how they want to play, who they want to be, maybe be wrong on this, but I'm going to go ahead and save Dorka Juhas. I like having some interior presence. If I was going to say one thing was really missing, it was size. Smith is basically your biggest player. And Juhas gives you some added depth. She's very fundamental. She's got a motor for days. Improving defensively. Improving offensively. I think she's still got room to grow. And I also protect her because if you don't, she's gone. If they end up protecting Diamond Miller, Dorky Juhas will be a Golden State Valkyrie. Now, I project Golden State will, in fact, select Diamond Miller. But the same is not necessarily true. And what I mean by that is, I have Minnesota protecting Dorka Juhas. I could see Golden State going in a couple different directions. I could absolutely see them speculating on the French big Maya Hirsch, former first round pick. I could absolutely see them going Jessica Shepard, the 6'3 forward jack of all trades. She can score at an efficient clip. She rebounds, she passes the ball. She would be a great selection from the standpoint of very stable, you know what you're going to get, maybe not the craziest high ceiling, but a very high floor. And what you need on a new franchise is a little bit of stability. You can't just have all speculation. You can't just have all super high upside potential. You need some players 
that can actually produce, and Jessica Shepard is that. In the end, however, I think Diamond Miller is where they go. Former second overall draft pick for whatever reason. I know there's a little bit of injury history. She never found her footing in Minnesota. I don't know if that's because she doesn't necessarily fit the player profile in this Minnesota scheme. She doesn't really shoot the ball. Won't really space the court that well. Can be a little bit out of control with the ball sometimes. A little bit frenetic. I don't know. I think that we probably would have seen her get some rotational minutes if everything was good there. I don't know if ownership will want to protect her. That might be like an overrule where they spent the second overall pick on her. We don't want her to go to waste, but this is what I see happening. I see her getting a fresh start in Golden State, and then we'll, we'll actually see. Obviously, if she balls out, you know, it might be a little egg on face situation. But frankly, I don't think she's any higher than ninth player in this rotation anyway. She was basically the 10th player at the end of last season. And I don't see that changing. So I think Minnesota is happy with the team they have. I think they're happy with who's going to be coming back. And hopefully this happens because I'd love to see Diamond fresh start. New squad, let's see what you got. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you think they'll protect Diamond. And then let me know who you think Golden State will pluck off this Minnesota roster.